Sometimes in life, less really is more, and for me, Samurai Warriors 5 is a refinement of the series, and the reduction in the roster, as well as some of the changes to the core gameplay, have made for a more streamlined and better Musu game. I'm Mark Walker, welcome back to Switch Up. If you enjoy the content, then consider sticking around. Remember we give away a free Switch game each and every month to the subscriber most active on the channel. Samurai Warriors 5 is sequel to the 2014 release of Samurai Warriors 4, with another Samurai's game releasing in between in 2016. This one released about a month ago in Japan to an excellent reception, and has now hit the western market. Will this Samurai slash through its own competition? Or will they show gun and send it running away? That was awful. <laughs> oh my goodness. Dad joke for the win. Well, let's find out. The narrative centers around the Sengoku period in Japan's history. Specifically, it features the stories of Yoshimoto Imagawa, but initially you take control of Nobunaga Oda alongside his childhood friend. The storyline's much more tightly knit than in previous games, and it came as quite a surprise at how well articulated it is. The cutscenes are reasonably straightforward and concise, and in quite a change from some of the Musu titles I've played and reviewed in the past, I was very easily able to follow the storyline and was quite engaged with it. There are lots of twists and turns, but most importantly it felt like I was invested in Nobunaga's story. The importance really is that when you go into battle you want a reason to be doing it. That's one of the things I felt has lacked in so many of these games in the past, but not the case this time around. When I had an optional side mission to go and save one of my allies who was in trouble, in the past, again, I would have just ignored it, but this time around, due to some of the story interactions prior to that scene and that moment, I actually wanted to save them. The exposition is helped by a much improved graphical engine. The cutscenes have lip-synced characters, and these look far better than some of the older titles. There's still the occasional line of dialogue or two that don't make any sense to a Western audience, but compared to Netflix's Dynasty Warriors film, this is a masterpiece, and certainly has far better cinematography. Looking at gameplay and controls, the game has a few new mechanics. And by a few, I mean an incredible amount. First thing to note is that there are less characters than there have been previously. There are 39 playable characters, although two of these are just older versions of other ones, and 10 of them won't be available in the story stages, only in free mode. The game itself is split into two main modes. You have story mode, which is initially available, and then citadel mode, which unlocks when you complete Nobunaga's first chapter. Citadel mode essentially acts as a tower defense game, allowing you to try out all of the available roster, experiment with different weapons and characters, but most importantly, you can acquire materials which can then be used to improve the core buildings used in story mode, but I'll talk about those in a while. Story mode is split through several chapters, with each chapter divided into several stages. While the stages look quite familiar and play out in a similar fashion to older titles, there's much more of an emphasis here on character progression, leveling, and individual weapons and skills. Each character can be equipped with any of the weapons that you find, and these in turn can be upgraded and improved. You can add crystals to them that will alter their base statistics, like adding fire damage, lightning or ice, and for all the others you've collected that you don't need, well just scrap them for parts and then use those to improve the ones you like. Every character will have a core weapon that they have unique abilities with, so it's not like you can just go out and use everything negating the need to swap characters because they have those core affinities. It does, however, allow you to mix things up, and the weapons really have a unique feel to them. Some have more aerial-based attacks, while others are slower, more powerful, but have devastating area of effect moves. Your light and heavy attacks feel quite standard, but as your character levels, you'll gain new combos, and you'll also find a full skill tree for each and every one. From here, you can alter the way that they play by investing points and experience. It leaves it feeling much more like an RPG in this respect. Combat has also seen a number of refinements. While you have your light and heavy attacks, as well as the ability to jump and summon a horse with a whistle, there are also two gauges ticking away in the background shown in the corners here. One of them, charged up, allows you to perform a devastating Musu attack. Oh This is completely unblockable and is usually best reserved for when fighting a general. This other gauge, when fully charged, shown at the top, allows you to activate a frenzied state. This increases your movement and attacks, 
and from this you can then perform some devastating moves. It's not something that charges up frequently, and you may only experience it once or twice per battle, but it's a nice mechanic that really invigorates the combat when it begins to lull, and it can be used tactically to get across the map in double quick time. Then you've got your ultimate skills. These are split into four areas, and they're triggered by holding down the R bumper button, and then A, B, X, or Y. You can equip them before you start a round, and they have a number of unique benefits. Things like increasing your defense or attack, or performing unblockable attacks, essential against certain enemy types. The best aspect of this combat for me is how well these systems tie together. You can chain ultimate moves into your standard attacks, round up a bunch of enemies using your hyper moves, and then clear the entire screen with your Musu mode before whistling for your horse and riding off. And those ultimate skills once again make the game feel more like an RPG as they can be equipped, upgraded and improved. Depending on the moves you use on certain enemy types, that will unlock different rewards that will be dropped from them. The more you use a certain weapon type, the more you'll gain experience for it, which, as with character experience, is kept in its own pool. This was nice because it meant you could store it up and use it on other players, not just the one who earned it. The map in the corner shows you where to head to next, and usually you'll be heading towards a general. In the past, I'd just spam the same attack until they were dead, and yeah, that's kind of the way here, but you do have a few more options. You can block using the L bumper button, and if you perfectly time a block, then you'll parry the enemy, and that will open up an area of attack. It's a system I love to see in place, because at least it begins to add a layer of depth to the combat for those people that want to use it. The only issue I really had though was you didn't really need to, generally using a combination of the hyper attacks and ultimate skills as well as your Musu mode, was more than enough for most enemies. The difficulty in general is quite easy on the normal mode, and certainly I wouldn't even consider trying the easy mode that's offered to you at the start of the game. On certain stages, you can choose a partner, which you can switch to on the fly. This was quite nice, as it meant if you saw an objective on the other side of the map, you could switch to your partner and then have them deal with it, without having to do that back and forth headless chicken run. Most levels are ended with a boss fight, usually tied together with a cutscene, and there's a little variety in the stages that this time with some escort missions, somewhere you'll be trying to escape from a castle, so it is nice to see Koei Tecmo at least try and mix up the formula in some of these levels. Let's talk then about the buildings and upgrade system. You'll have your castle area that's split into March, which is taking you to your next battle, Dojo, which includes that leveling system and skill tree for each character, as well as allowing you to tweak their weapons and change weapon masteries, Blacksmith, which is obviously where you upgrade, the shop, so all the gold you earn in battle can be used to purchase new items and gear, which I really like stables where you can purchase new mounts as well as upgrading existing ones and then equip those to specific generals and then the aforementioned citadel mode which allows you to then upgrade all of these buildings if you gather together the specific parts it's a tightly refined game and it feels so much better to play for it it feels so much less convoluted and much more clear in terms of progression and development of characters and it makes it a really fun game to play without feeling completely overwhelming. I give gameplay 18 out of 20. I would have liked it to have been a touch more difficult in all honesty, but it's the most fun I've had with a Musu game in a long time. And when you factor in split screen with my daughter, we had an absolute blast. The controls are fine, you have the lock on camera for the generals. It was nice to see them add options to invert both the X and Y axis which I know a lot of players look for, and you can also tweak the sensitivities. There were a couple of scenery blocking moments where I was trying to wrestle the camera into position, but overall it was decent. I give controls 17 out of 20. In terms of visuals, performance and audio then, Samurai Warriors has some highs and some lows. We'll get the bad stuff out the way first. When you're in split screen, the performance drops significantly. This has been the case in previous titles on Switch, and it seems that this engine just struggles under the slower CPU. I still enjoyed my experience in co-op with my daughter, but those frame rates were going to sub 30. When in single player mode, it's aiming for 30 FPS locked out, and while I haven't frame captured, it seems to maintain that for most of your playtime. This engine is starting to creak though, with characters popping in into the near distance, a lack of anti-aliasing, so you'll see jaggy edges on most surfaces, low texture resolution on some items, some of the character models have seen improvements and some of the special effects, 
and certainly the cutscenes look much better, so it's a bit of a mixed bag overall. It runs okay in handheld, I didn't experience any major frame drops there either, and for anyone who doesn't speak Japanese, you'll also have that thing where you're trying to fight 300 people on screen whilst reading a text box that's at the bottom. It's been the case now for a while and there's no English dub, but at least it's now in the bottom middle, so you can kind of read it rather than down in the left hand corner as it was in one of the other games. I quite enjoyed the soundtrack. The Japanese voice actors do a good job. The direction is so much better than it was in other games. There are some real standout story scenes that will stick in your memory. Overall though, I give visuals and performance 15 out of 20 and the audio scores 16 out of 20. I'm almost inclined to not talk about the digital price. The game is £54.99 and the digital deluxe edition £79.99 or your regional equivalent. However, these can already be had for £35 to £38 physically, so realistically you're just going to want to go that way. While they have reduced the roster of playable characters, They've also included so much more in terms of depth. If you're someone who's previously written the games off because of that, these might really appeal to you and there's lots to do here. There's the co-op mode as well as the online mode if you want to go that route and then all the unlocks, abilities and skill trees for each of those playable characters. £54.99 is a very high price but if the Switch is your only option you are getting a lot of value but if you can, go physical. Overall then, I give value 17 out of 20. Samurai Warriors 5 is going to appeal to fans of the series who got burnt out and wanted a little bit more depth. There's a real refinement here and an excellent story and although there are some performance issues in co-op mode, overall it's a much better game. It scores a switch up score of 83%. Let me know in the comments if you'll be checking this one out, if you're a fan of the series and as always a big thanks for watching the channel. Thanks to our patrons, you guys support us each and every month and it really does mean the world to us. And as always, for all of you, for all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers guys, see ya! ちょっと見事な。